Hello, my name is Simon Xiao and I'm the originator of the workshop Soft Skills for IT. I'm here to explain to you the basis for that workshop and uh, even if you, you know, decide or not decide to join us in the workshop, I think uh, the following information is very useful for you as an individual and as an organization. Now, uh, you can see on the screen that I've asked a fundamental question. That if you can choose only one thing that will improve your capabilities and your marketability. Doesn't matter where you go, whatever your technical type of skill or the level of a skill, what is that one thing that is going to dramatically improve your marketability in the next few months? in the next few years and perhaps in the next couple of decades. Yeah. Um, it's a very important question to ask yourself and to have an answer to because your marketability basically depends a lot on the effectiveness of your work in relationship to your employers and to your client's organization. Okay. Now, um, the, the, the thing which I'm really really kind of focusing on here is that uh, there are certain things that we need to have to be effective irrespective of our technical capabilities and I speak from somebody who's come from the business side as well as the technical side over the last 30 to 40 years okay? uh, we all in the technological sphere have great hack skills because otherwise we wouldn't be where we are at the moment isn't it we are good Java programmers, .NET programmers, whether it's Microsoft platform, IBM platform, open source, you know, you know uh, any of those names that we attach to particular technology groups. We may be an engineer, we may be a software engineer, we may be a web developer. However, um, the number of things that we continually have to learn is increasing. And when we ask the fundamental question, that for most of us now please bear with me because some of us some of you are highly successful and you already are very good in the things that we are talking about in this presentation however in general in general we find that the level of customer satisfaction among the business people uh, is pretty low you know, uh, in terms of IT systems yeah if we compare the, to the, the expressed level of satisfaction of business people in, in, in relationship to them uh, buying a car, uh, building a new factory yeah, uh, against that of taking delivery of a new IT system. Yeah. There seems to be a sort of disconnect there. Yeah. Uh, another thing which is interesting from our viewpoint is that technical people do seem to find themselves stuck uh, sooner than later in their career path yeah, and they compare themselves to people who are graduates in um, other disciplines who seem to be able to move faster high up the corporate ladder and to be able to move sideways within the organization as within uh, cross organizations so what is the problem and how do we resolve that problem I mean, the level of stress ah oh, the level of stress all of us are pretty stressed out right the level of stress is increasing despite all the kind of training that we get sometimes get to the kind of books we read self-help books on how to manage our lives and how to you know have less stress but let's face it you know our stress is getting up uh, because there seems to be a lot more things that we need to learn and to be good at uh, than we really have time and energy for yeah? so we must choose wisely and that's why in the first slide I put up this thing about if there was just one thing and assuming that you have no other choice, you're only given one choice, that you really, really want to improve in yourself. What is that one thing to be? Um, basically, it is fundamental skills. Now, please uh, give me a few minutes before you turn this presentation off. Nobody is saying that you do not know how to add 1 plus 1 equals to 2 or that you don't know ABC. No, we're not talking about that. So, yeah. We're talking about certain fundamental skills that um, must be there in order for us to be effective in the higher level skills. Yeah? Uh, these are the skills whereby if we do not have them, 
it doesn't matter how high a level of technology uh, we have positioned ourselves in, it doesn't matter how high up the management ladder that we position ourselves, but without those fundamental skills, we very, very quickly hit a brick wall and we fall down. Okay? You know, you and I have always met those kind of people, right? Sometimes it's for one of technical skills that the, pe the person kind of uh, gets stuck you know, because he or she has oversold himself or herself in terms of the skills that he or she have and when they reach that level, uh, the, the truth comes up. Yeah. However, I'm talking about a, a good, honest reason why people like you who have genuine skills uh, may find that you hit a barrier. Okay, now these skills, the fundamental skills, you know, which which we are talking about, yeah, the very very basic skills that we should have uh, learned. You know, we have in fact learned most of these skills, but it's never been developed, and uh, some of the other skills was never formally taught in school or in university, uh, and that is where we are with these problems. Okay, now these skills, if they are lacking in individuals, it's got an impact in terms of a career, the quality of life. Uh, if it's lacking collectively within the team that we work in, it makes our team less effective, less cohesive. Across teams, between teams, within the architecture department or IT department or engineering department or accounts department, it doesn't matter, right? Within the organization, if we do not have these fundamental skills and do not share the way we, we use these fundamental skills, then there is a severe limitation on what can be accomplished within the organization's departments, yeah? And of course, Cross departments within the organization. Uh, the effect takes longer to be noticed but uh, more severe then. Okay, now what are these skills? Okay, it's difficult to give a name to this sort of skills, however the collective name uh, of soft skills has been applied, yeah, not just by IT but by industry. Industries in general have attached the term uh, soft skills uh, as opposed to hard skills of engineering, software development, specific skills that can be defined um, uh, with a pinch of salt I'm saying that yeah uh, you can define hard skills like technical skills much more readily not perfectly but much more readily than you can soft skills yeah? okay but these soft skills are is the, when you see it you know it you know you know what I mean so however they are specifically related to IT, what we are talking about. Yeah? I am not talking about the kind of soft skills that teach you how to stand up in front of a crowd and to wow them with a fantastic presentation that entertains them, gives them the feel-good factor, and then uh, you know, two days later, you know, everybody's back down. You know, the kind of uh, sort of stuff that you, know, you and I have attended before. You know, rah, 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 and we feel great for the next few days, and then you know, without us knowing why and how, we're back down right bottom again. Yeah? Um, we're talking about skills which can be applied directly to the technical areas that we work in yeah? and that we will actually be using over and over again uh, so that we keep on developing our expertise in those areas. Yeah? In truth, uh, many of these skills are thinking skills. Right? How do we actually think? And again, please, 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 please understand me. I'm not trying to insult anybody here. Yeah, I'm not saying that people don't know how to think, God forbid, because the fact that you are standing there, sitting there, I'm sitting here, means that we know how to think. Yeah? However, there are certain kind of aspects of thinking that has never ever been taught in school or in universities. Yeah? We were taught the theory of thinking, but we have not been trained to really uh, think in ways that are quick, that allows us to see patterns you know, very quickly. You know, patterns not the sort of patterns that we, we identify and we can match to a book. Yeah, that's the wrong way to, to look at patterns because if I give you a book with 50 patterns and everything you come across, you try to match, map it to that pattern, uh, that's probably useful in some aspects of software development, but, but hey, you know, um, the world is made up of millions and millions and millions of things and therefore there is an endless way uh, patterns can appear. Yeah, uh, so we are we are really looking at that sort of thinking skills. How quickly you can see threads within discussions, how quickly you can form patterns, will determine to a large extent uh, your soft skills capability as applied to your technological type of work. Yeah? 
uh, looks familiar. Two guys pointing fingers at each other. Um, of course, most of us don't like to talk about this within our own organization, <clears throat> but in the tea shops and when we have informal chit chats with people we know, we, 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 we do admit that. Right? Uh, very often, the technical people point a finger at the user at the business and say, look, those guys don't know what they want. They keep telling me they want something and later they, you know, uh, they tell me they want something else and uh, I don't know how to handle this. And the business people are, are getting a bit restless and say, God, you know, these technical people, why can't they understand business? You know, we try and tell them something and uh, they don't know what we want. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So technical people, uh, the way that business or users perceive us is that, hey, you know, you guys just crawl into your corner and do what you want to do and what you have to do. Right? Don't keep bugging me all the time. You, you guys keep asking me to tell you more and I don't really know what else you need to know. Yeah? And if I tell you ABC, then it's quite logical that if you work in this company, you should know EFG, right? So, and, and, and I, I, I fail to see why you, you can't. And the earth technologists say, but hey, I'm not a mind reader. Don't expect me to read your mind. Now, how do we actually get around that problem? Yeah? We need to get around that problem because uh, both sides really, really uh, cannot be trained, cannot be trained to know as much about the other side's job as the other side, let's face it, okay? And we don't want that either. We don't want the users to know so much about technology that we become irrelevant. Ha! Huh. So you see the problem now? The business themselves do not want the technical people to know as much about the business as they themselves, the business people, know because that's a threat to their livelihood. That's right. So what we need then is a middle ground, right, where both parties can come together sensibly, have a sensible discussion for the benefit of the organization, for the client, whereby neither side feels threatened. And how is that possible? How is that possible? Okay. That is possible when both sides can see that the way of getting together, of sharing information, is going to create such a tremendous amount of new information. Yeah that we do not really have to share everything we know. We just have to share a little bit, you share a little bit, I share a little bit, and hey, you know, suddenly you and I see nine times more than what we could see in the past. That's great, right? Right? Are you willing to give up 10% of your knowledge to share that? You're not going to lose it, you're going to share it, right? With others, in order to gain 10 times as much information or knowledge as the ones you've given up. Think about it, yeah. So, uh, think about it. And I think when you've done that, you will see that it is indeed the right way for us to approach the issue. Okay. Well, this slide basically goes through, you know, uh, in a sort of humorous sort of way what I've been talking about, right? Now, what are some of the skills that you must have? Yeah. You need to have negotiation skills because if you do not know how to negotiate with the business and the users and with other technical people, you're going to find life really, really miserable and boring um, because you'll be always under the influence and the control of circumstances yeah? because you really need to do that. And please, please, please do not uh, compare what I'm saying to some of the negotiation books that you may have read the sort of negotiation that you are trying to uh, pull a fast one, trying to have the upper hand. We're not talking about that, right? We're talking about negotiations where both parties are able to logically and rationally agree and come to terms with the fact that things has to be constrained in certain ways. Um, that there are patterns, remember we talk about patterns, patterns that uh, should be seen now rather than six months down the line in order to save both sides a lot of pain and aggravation. Yeah? Um, presentation skills and presentation skills again the way that we look at it from our the side and from the way we, we do things is that it is not standing there and talking it is basically ways that you actually have to get information across right you communicate face to face one to a crowd maybe even a crowd to you um, perhaps in terms of written communication right report writing as some people like to call it but the way we, we do it here is that we we integrate everything we do not separate them out but we show you how you can use them in separate aspects right the same skills that you will use for a presentation face-to-face -face will to a certain extent be used in your writing 
sort of presentations yeah and that makes it so 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 much more efficient in terms of learning right you learn one thing and you can use it across the board in so many areas yeah um, the bits in yellow of course are those which are less often seen in uh, soft skills kind of uh, syllabus right? we talk about instant scoping skills right? why do you need negotiation skills why do you need presentation skills why do you need to have interpersonal skills why because you need to to very often do instant scoping instant scoping throughout the projects right even before the project starts you are you are asked to uh, give a ballpark figure right? in terms of money resources timeline yeah for a particular project you and bark on and without having that ability to kind of have rational ways of coming up with estimates, coming up with you know ballpark figures, then you really, really are setting yourself in for problems big time as the project progresses. Yeah, and here again is where all these soft skills come in because the soft skills that allow you, given one set of information, to multiply that information tenfold, right? right in the beginning right sometimes within the first meeting that you have right when somebody tells you two facts from those two facts you will derive 20 other sets of information and that is really really impressive to the people that you talk to okay? and in a sort of way that is not so uh, intimidating yeah because they realize that you have got this inf new information you have created this new knowledge because you have interacted with them in a very, very creative sort of way yeah and both parties have a very very happy collaborative relationship from then onwards yeah and common sense of course yeah where does common sense come from yeah we always joke that common sense isn't so common yeah and that is true because it relies really on many of the other kind of skills listed early on in the slide that we talk about and of course these are the things that you uh, need to be able to do given the soft skills that that you will be learning in this soft skills for IT workshop yeah how do you tell the user a client you know stuff that he doesn't really know yet and that, that so that he accepts okay I haven't told you these things but now that you bring up these points uh, yes these are the things that I want as well for example yeah the total picture of your project from the corporate viewpoints okay many technical people cannot understand why is it that when my project is on time and on budget you pull the plug on my project why is it that you are so unhappy when I'm delivering what you said you wanted in the first place, right? It's not my problem if you keep changing your mind. You don't expect me to, to, to be able to read your mind. Remember, we talk about those things, yeah? So from the, the corporation's viewpoint, and what are the ways in which they will measure you? Whether it's KPI, sometimes the measurements you may not even be aware of. Yeah? And how do you need to keep the client and the top corporate management happy? Yeah, this and uh, not in terms of uh, you know some esoteric uh, some underhand sort of way but in terms of the kind of pictures that you paint realistic pictures based on reality that you actually provide for them you know? uh, business concept you know most of these business concepts I guess that uh, you would have learned in your college university um, except that of course you know you haven't used them you've forgotten about it and why haven't you used them well Truth be told, many of these things we learn in university and college, we never, never, never ever use that in the rest of our lives. Yeah? But why not? You know, some of them are useful, perhaps not in the way which is listed in the textbook. Yeah, but tweet. Some of them are extremely useful. You know, in terms of uh, our jobs and in the rest of our lives. Okay? Now, the soft skills are important to organizations and to individuals. Why is that? Because the organizations, as long as the soft skills are seamlessly incorporated into your job tasks, okay, um, that determines the ability of the organization to move flexibly, quickly towards its corporate objectives, right, and to have changes in strategies and tactics as they move along in their business. You know? From your own point of view, from my own point of view, okay, um, improving the soft skills that I have, improving the soft skills that you have from your point of view okay, will determine your success in your future because let's face it, you know, there are two skills you still, still, still need to keep on picking up technical.
magical skills. Remember, yeah, I'm not talking about dropping those things. However, as you pick up technical skills, don't forget right, that more than 50% of your success is attributable to soft skills. Yeah? And uh, technology is highly unpredictable. Okay? If you look at the different name brands, name brands, software, hardware, etc., over the last 10 years, even yeah, you'll find that movements in the market uh, have created a lot of surprises. Yeah? So neither you nor I nor any guru in the industry can predict the exact technical landscape 10 years from now. Yeah? So doesn't it make sense to invest at least part of your time and energy to picking up to improving your soft skills, the sort of skills that will be relevant irrespective of the technical landscape, irrespective of the part of the world that you're in, and irrespective of the time that you happen to live in in this world. Yeah. So do think about picking up and improving the soft skills that you have. 99% right? uh, effort. Percentages are interesting because what's the difference between 99% and 98%? What's the difference between 9% and 99%? Perhaps easier to see, but it is a bit of a arbitrary um, sort of way that we, we, we use uh, proportions and percentages, okay? unless we are specifically measuring, counting things that we've counted. Okay? However, generally you find that uh, skills 99% of the time you spend is really affected by the soft skills that you have. Uh, unless you have the kind of job that you sit in a corner by yourself, you don't talk to anybody, you never communicate with anybody else. Hey, that sounds like somebody in prison, isn't it? Uh, oh no, even in prison, they feed you, right? Okay, now. It's one of the hardest things to teach. Soft skills are one of the hardest things to teach, specifically, especially to technical people. Uh -huh. Why? Because, well, academia, when we were in schools and we were in colleges and universities, well, did not really focus so much on that. You know, it's not their fault. It's the wrong time and place to teach these kind of things. Yeah, Because, uh, you know, you really need to have come out and work in a big, wide world. In order to really understand, you know, and to really apply these things to the extent that that we need to today, yeah? it cannot be learned in separate topics. Why? Because if you just learn how to present, and how many times in a month would you be asked to stand up and present in front of people? Yeah? So your chances of practicing that isn't too great. Uh, and of course, if you uh, seem to be very artificial, you know waving your hands and positioning your body the way the textbook says, you know, people see through that kind of thing very quickly and there's nothing worse than that because when people think and people can see that you're trying to uh, put on an act, then that looks like manipulation, you know, nobody likes to be manipulated, yeah. So we really, really need to have a way, a workshop, a way to train you, to inculcate that to you so that all these skills are internalized within you uh, and that you will use it unconsciously. Yeah? Within the workshop itself, that must be achieved because it is not something that you can go away later on and refer to the notes and say, oh, no, I forgot I have to place my hand in this position. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah? It is a little bit very much like bicycling, remember? Okay, you either can ride a bike or you cannot ride a bike. And if you have learned how to ride a bike, Hey, you know, 50 years later, that skill is still there. The only question is, you know, am I too old uh, to control my bodily uh, limbs and my bodily functions so that I probably may fall off the bike? Yeah, other than that, that particular balancing skills, etc., is there. Yeah? So this is the kind of skills we're talking about, a lifelong skill. And it must also, just recap, be learned in the context of our work either in enterprise architecture, in business analysis, in software development. Yeah? All these must be part of the whole package yeah, for it to work effectively. And um, the workshop approach, now here's a little bit, uh, un unashamedly, I'm going to do a little 
little bit, just a little bit of setting. Okay, the workshop that I designed is based on real world scenario of your work. Yeah. Now, it's a lot easier for the trainer. Remember, it's not a facilitator. It has to be a real, real, real trainer with the skill to actually modify and adjust the cost as it goes along, okay? not somebody who just follows the timetable. Okay? Now, the real world scenario is important. Why? Because, hey, life doesn't happen the way that a case study, however realistic we try to make it, right? Um, it doesn't happen that way. Uh, it's a lot easier for the trainer to say, okay, guys, here's exercise number one, okay? You have 10 minutes and then. Uh, Talk to each other, whatever, yeah. And at the end of the ten minutes, the trainer comes up with, "Hey, here's the sample solution, right?" And you look at it and say, "Hey, that's very easy. That makes sense. I've got it correct." So, would you ever come across this kind of thing in in real life? No. Okay. However, if in the context of the workshop, that you or some members of your team have brought up real life case studies, okay, that they happen to be working on or that they happen to have worked on, or they happen to think they may be working on, hey, if we handle those kind of situations, don't you think that you would have the ability then, at the end of this workshop, to go back and to act accordingly okay, with skills that have already been internalized within yourself? Okay. So, uh, just as what we said earlier between technical and business, it has to be a collaborative approach okay so in the workshop it is a collaborative approach we always try to put in technical as well as business people within the workshop so that you can see for yourself you can experience for yourself you can actually get that real feeling and you can internalize it within yourself the ability to work collaboratively with other technical people as well as with the business people and the business people who attend this workshop will begin to understand and to also have that skill internalized within themselves on how it makes no difference whether they are communicating with technical or non-technical people. Those fundamental basic understanding and knowledge and skills must be applied uh, in terms of collaborative working. Okay. And um, okay, well, this is probably the most blatant advertisement that I'm going to put up for you to look at is soft skills for IT is the one workshop everyone in your company must attend yeah. and if you happen to be the earlier ones to attend this workshop you know presumably you have an advantage over the rest who attend later on okay so do not wait act, act now okay unlock your hidden potential by contacting the people or the person who has given you this particular presentation or who has given you the link to this presentation they will know how to give you more information they will be able to access more information from me um, you know some information will probably be I know it will be very useful for you yeah, whether you attend the workshop or not but we hope that you will see it's a very uh, good thing to do to attend this workshop okay? if you can't get hold of it and for if for some reason you've got hold of this presentation from sources that you rather not divulge then please drop me an email, simon at theanalyst.com and I shall respond to you and provide you with uh, information that I may have that may be more useful for you in addition to the details about the course and to which organization you can register for the course. With that, I bid you farewell and thank you for listening to me and good luck in everything you do. Bye-bye.